and welcome back. My name is Lexi Jong, and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. Today, we are going to be going over the three newest Pat McGrath quads that came out with the Celestial Divinity Collection. The quads come packaged in these beautiful pastel boxes. We've got a light pink, a lavender, and a light blue box. And they, I have to say, I ordered directly from patmcgrath.com and I didn't have any of that annoying plastic in there, just black tissue paper, which was great. And that's how my last several orders have been from them. However, these did take a while to get to me. As we know, the highlighter came much earlier. I ordered that actually like later that day. Uh, and I ordered these much earlier, like first thing at, at, during the launch. So I don't know. But just a note, at least the plastic seems to be gone. I haven't had that in quite a long time now. The three quads come in the same kind of packaging that the quads last year came in. So it's the like mini mothership material. And we have the Pat McGrath logo on the top. One of the things that they added here on the back is actually the color names. And the name of the quad is written in small print here. So I think that's nice. And I thought this was a little odd, but this particular quad here, this one is Fleur Fantasia, and you can see I had this protective film on it, but neither of my other quads came with that. So it was only on that one. And then the mirror inside, you do have a protective film on the mirror. And then this is Fleur Fantasia. So we have four shades here. They are all new shades. We're gonna swatch these in a minute. Let me show you the other two. This one here is Interstellar Icon. And we do have a repeat shade here. This burgundy shade is Blue Blood and that one is from the Decadence palette. And then last up, we have Risqué Rose. And again, all of these shades I believe are new. One thing, this sparkle shade here is called Lavendarine, and one of her sparkly lip glosses, the Opulus glosses, is also called Lavendarine. So just something I found a little interesting. Now, as for the actual product, these are made in Italy, and each of the shadows is approximately 0 0.07 ounces. So actually on these two here, the Fleur Fantasia and Interstellar Icon, these both say that we have four shadows at two grams each or 0 0.07 ounces. However, the Risqué Rose says that we have four at 1.72 grams or 0 0.06 ounces. So just something to note that this one does seem to be slightly smaller, which, you know, it doesn't appear that way when you look at it. Now, one thing I just, I wanted to mention, and I had said in the beginning that these quads are made in Italy, but I actually forgot to mention that actually only Rose, Risqué Rose is made in Italy. So this is made in Italy. This is one that's also slightly smaller. And these other two, Interstellar Icon and Fleur Fantasia, are actually made in the US of US and imported ingredients. So just a note. That being said, I didn't notice a quality difference between Risqué Rose and the others. So I just wanted to make sure though that I was very clear on that. And the expected shelf life of these is approximately two years. Now let's start off with swatches of the quads. And then I have five looks, I believe, to show you. So we'll go through those looks and then we'll meet back here to talk about my thoughts. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start with Fleur Fantasia and we're gonna start off over here with this more beige shade, which is called Hutopia. Then we'll go to Lavender Blue and then Iridescent Orchid and Lotus Paradise. Looking at these shades, you can see that Hutopia is going to be a satin, kind of like a golden sand kind of shade. And then we have lavender blue, and it's a little bit hard to tell. You can kind of tell as I'm moving my arm, but there is gonna be kind of like a pearlescent blue shift to it. It's not really a true duochrome, like you're not seeing a lot of that, but there is kind of like this metallic hint or glint of a light blue. But other than that, it looks like a like a lavender blue satin shade uh, when you just look at it straight on. And then we have this more shimmery shade here. And you can see 
as I shift, you can see the actual base shade is going to be kind of like a tawny brown shade. And then we have obviously a lot of pink sparkle here. And in the pan, this one looks a lot more fluorescent than it does on the eye or on the arm. It looks a, a lot warmer to me when I actually have it on compared to in the pan. And then the last shade, this is called Lotus Paradise. This is a matte shade and it's kind of like, like in the pan, it looks like a, a rose shade and it kind of looks like rose mixed with clay to me. So there's definitely more of that burnt orange undertone to it. So this is the quad Fleur Fantasia. And color-wise, we have Utopia, Lavender Blue, Iridescent Orchid, and Lotus Paradise. Next up, we're gonna take a look at Interstellar Icon, and we're gonna start off with Golden Polaris, Hypnotique, Divine, um, then we'll go to Blue Blood and Divine Dahlia. Golden Polaris, you can see, is gonna be a soft gold shimmery shade. And it's not, it's not a topper. You could apply it lightly with a patty motion to have it act more as a topper, but it does actually have a pigmented base there. And then we have Hypnotique, which is, in my opinion, the most unique shade out of all of these quads. This one is my favorite. So it's a beautiful, beautiful blue. It's shimmery. And when the light hits it, particularly on the eyes, you just kind of like catch like glints of other shades of blue. So I just think that one's gorgeous. And then we have Blue Blood, which is also in the Decadence palette. And it's a satin burgundy shade. It's very gorgeous. And then last up, we have Divine Dahlia, which is kind of like an olive green with a brown undertone. And there is sparkle. So one more time, we have Golden Polaris, Hypnotique, Blue Blood, Divine Dahlia. Last up, we have Risque Rose. So we have Rose Rebellion, Lavendarine, and then we have Mink Noir and Life on Mars. Rose Rebellion is a really bright pink. It's like a really creamy matte though. To say that the texture of this one is a bit creamier than some others so when you first use it in the pan you know it's kind of like it's kind of like you have to use a little bit of it first to get the creaminess out of it your very first like swipe with a brush you're not going to pick up as much of the creaminess but the more you use this shade the creamier it gets so it's kind of like you have to get past that top layer and then next up we have lavendarine this is really more of a topper shade and it swatches much more deeply than it appears. Even when you use it with a finger, you know, it's still going to be, it's really more of a topper and it's this really pretty glittery silver lavender shade. Next up, we have Mink Noir, which is a brown shade with a little bit of burgundy in there. So you can see like a touch of burgundy in here but it really looks mostly just like a rich brown. So it's actually surprising. I was afraid that this would be one of those browns that has too much red in it, so it doesn't quite look right around the eyes, but that's not the case. And then last up, sorry, I have a little bit of Mink Noir mixed in there at the top. Last up, we have Life on Mars, which is going to be a shimmery pink. Uh, not sorry, <laughs> not pink, sorry, a shimmery peach. So it's a, a peachy shade. There is a little bit of a touch of warm pink in there, but it's pretty much just peach. So one more time, we have Rose Rebellion, Lavendarine, Mink Noir, and then Life on Mars. So these are all of the quads. Now these quads retail for $58. And they are a little pricey for what you are getting. Keep in mind that these are not really her special shades. The quads that she released last year around the holidays were all special shades. And a lot of these are very ordinary. So there are things about some of these shades that make them very special. But in essence, you know, the formula for most of these is what you would find in her, her regular formulas.
let's go ahead and take a look at the looks I created using these quads. I used each quad on its own one time, and then I have a couple of looks that kind of combined quads or, you know, this one actually is mostly interstellar icon. So we have some looks with that. And one thing I wanted to note is when I was reading the names off the back of the palettes, like I have to read them backwards and the way I was holding them. So it's like backwards and upside down. So I think a few times I mixed up the names. So take a look at the note <laughs> that I have at the bottom of the screen where I correct myself if a name is incorrect. So just wanted to give you a heads up that I did make a mistake with some of the names and I did my best to correct myself in there, but just, you know, pay attention. I'm gonna start off with the Synergy Crease 2 and we're going into the Lavender Palette and we're gonna go into this first shade, Hutopia. Next, I'm going with the Sony G Soft Shader and I'm going into this shade here, which is called Lotus Paradise. I'm gonna apply this to the inner portion. Actually, we're just gonna kind of go all over with this one. I wiped off the brush and now we're going into the purple shade Lavender Blue. I'm gonna apply this at least to the outer half. I haven't decided yet. All right, we're going all over with this one. Layering the two of these, you can really see both colors. The lavender blue is sheer enough that you are still getting some of that peachy pink shade shining through. Just looks a little different when you kind of shift. We're gonna go ahead with my finger into this uh, sparkly shade, Iridescent Orchid. Give me a little more of that. Just putting it on the outer half. I have to say, it's not showing up as much as I expected. We're gonna try the iridescent orchid with the brush as well and just see if maybe that makes a little bit more impact. I think it's fairly similar. Mm, this look is uh, its not the greatest. <laughs> I think I need to play around with this quad some more because I think the shimmer really isn't picking up that well from, you know, maybe because of the way everything's layered. We'll have to play with this some more. So we're going to go with this look for now, but we're taking the Ruffer 23 into the Lavender Blue for the lower lash line. I'm taking the Chantecaille Luster Glide Eyeliner in Olive Brocade for the upper lash line. So I'm twirling the brush in the Lavender Blue and just going over the Olive Brocade so I have a hint of both shades here on the lash line. I actually kind of like the effect of that. That looks kind of cool. All right, and this is it. This is the final eye look from a distance. I have to say it turned out better than I first thought. It's a little pinker than I think I would go with for the next look with this quad, but overall not bad. Taking the Sonia G crease too, and we're going to go into Blue Blood. So I'm dabbing a little bit of this in the outer corner and brushing it into the crease. But I want it kind of blended out more in the crease. I don't want it super stark. So we're gonna leave it there and then I will take out a clean brush later and blend that out more. Taking the Sonia G Worker Pro into Golden Polaris. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this to the inner corner. Same brush into Divine Dahlia. I'm 
tapping over Golden Polaris, except for the very, very inner corner. This shade is very special. You can see as I'm spreading it out, you're getting like that lavender shift. Wiping off the brush, we're going into Hypnotic. I'm gonna add this to the outer corner. And I'm tapping over Divine Dahlia. Going in with a clean crease brush, this is the Ruffer 16. And I am just blending the crease area. I just realized I've been saying the wrong names. So apparently this here is Golden Polaris. This is Hypnotique. We have Blue Blood and um, Divine Dahlia here. So I'm taking the Smudger 1 into Divine Dahlia. Taking just a touch of Hypnotique. I'm gonna add that right in the center of the lower lash line. I'm gonna take the Ruffer 23 into Blue Blood. This is for the upper lash line. Just taking what's left on the brush and doing the outer corner to just kind of blend things together. And this is it for my first eye look with this quad. And I have to say, the colors in here are gorgeous. And this is my final look from a distance. I added the Alizan blush from Chanel, as well as the Guerlain Terracotta Holiday Bronzer and the Muse Lip Gloss from Lisa Eldridge. Starting with the Raffer 16 brush, we're gonna go into this light pink which is called Life on Mars. Taking the refer 14 into the shade next to it, Mink Noir. Just adding a little bit here to the outer corner and then I'm dabbing off the brush so I have less pigment on there and I'm putting this in the crease. Going back in with the Ruffer 16, no additional shadow, but I am just gonna kind of blend this a little bit. Now I'm taking the Builder 3 from Sonya G. I'm gonna go back into Life on Mars. I'm gonna put this on the inner third. Same brush and going into this pink one, Rose Rebellion. Same brush, but I wiped it off and going back into Life on Mars. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on top of the pink here. Just to get to the halfway point. Now I'm gonna take my finger into this chunky glitter, and this is called Lavendaring. I'm gonna put this right in the center. Oh, it's actually more sheer than I was expecting. Just gonna put this all over then. So I can definitely see the purple shift there. In the pan, it really looks more gray. And then when you put on your finger, you can see that lavender. But this is definitely just a topper shade. I'm gonna take a little bit of Life on Mars as well. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more of this over the brighter pink. Okay, adding more of the lavendarine on top of that. Just taking a cloth to get some of that glitter off and you can see that kind of smeared pink. So I'll have to clean that up with some concealer. I'm gonna take the Ruffer 16 again and just blend the crease. All right, so I'm gonna clean this up and then I'm gonna line my eyes with the Mink Noir shade using a small pencil brush. I'm using the Sonia G Flat Definer in Mink Noir. Just gonna line the upper and lower lashes with this. But I'm gonna go 
upper first residue on the lower lashes. Okay, and you can see there was a little bit of fallout from the shade. And that's it for this look. I'm going to put on some mascara and I'll show you a distance shot. So this is the final eye look from a distance. When I was doing the eye look, I did have on a sample of the Chanel Ink Fusion in 818 True Red. Uh, it just looked like too much with this. So I took that off and now I have on the Chantecaille Lip Veil and Tam Bodhi. I'm going to be using a shade or two from each of the new quads. And first we're gonna start off with the Classic Crease from Sonia G. We're gonna go into this shade here, which is called Life on Mars in the Rose Risque palette or whatever it's called. <laughs> Add this to the crease. And I'm buffing it up a little bit, not all the way to the brow bone though. Next, I'm going into the Lavender Quad. I'm taking the Ruffer 02 into this lavender shade, which is called Lavender Blue. I'm going to apply this to the inner corner here. So I'm going about a third. Next up, I'm going into this quad. And we're going to go into this blue shade here, Hypnotique. I'm going to apply this to the center portion. I'm going to get a little bit more and tap over the lavender blue. Just going to add a little bit more here on top of the lavender blue. And then for the outer corner, I am going into Divine Dahlia. Next up, I'm taking the Surratt Smoky Eye Brush. This is the medium one and I have no shadow. I'm just going to lightly kind of blend these together a little bit. And then next up, we're going back into the Rose Quad and I'm taking Lavendarine with my finger and I'm just gonna tap this all over the lid. Back in with the classic crease from Sonia G, no shadow. And then for the lower lash line, I'm taking the Smudger 2 from Sonia G and I'm going into Divine Dahlia. Same brush and I wiped it off, but going into Hypnotique and just gonna add a little bit of this right underneath Divine Dahlia. For the upper lash line, I am taking Mink Noir from the Rose Quad. And I'm gonna keep this closer to the lash line here. Just doing a little bit on the lower lash line to combine those two. Taking the Sonia G Pencil Pro, and I'm gonna go into Lotus, oh no, Iridescent Orchid. And this is just for the inner corner. And this is the final eye look up close, and I'll see you in a minute. This is the final look from a distance. And I have on the Chanel Holiday Blush, the Pat McGrath Highlighter, and the Chantecaille Lip Chic in Honeysuckle from the Spring Collection. Taking the Ruffer 15 and going into the Lavender Quad, I'm going to take this shade here, which is called Lotus Paradise. I'm just going to put this in the crease. Next, I'm going into this palette with the Builder Pro from Sonia G, and I'm gonna go into Divine Dahlia here. I'm gonna put this all over. Okay. 
So I've been swiping a little bit and I can feel the fallout falling on my cheek. I don't really see it yet, but I up oh, there's some, but I can definitely feel it. So this is definitely one that you want to either dampen your brush with or just be more, more careful to use a patting motion. Next, I'm taking my finger into Blue Blood. I'm just gonna dab this in the center. Get more on there. And now I'm taking a touch of Hypnotic, a Hypnotique and going right over Blue Blood with that. This really dampens down the blue so you get just like a slight hint of it with the shift of your head going back in with the refer 16 and or 15 rather just buffing the crease taking the refer 15 into this latest shade golden polaris just getting a tiny tiny bit on the tip and i'm just going to kind of buff this under the brow bone for a little bit of sparkle Taking the Pencil 2 brush from Sonia G into Golden Polaris, and this is for the inner corner. And for the lower lash line, I am using the Refer 03, and I am going to go in with Blue Blood. Wiping the brush off, going into Hypnotique. I'm gonna place this on top of Blue Blood. I want to smudge that out a bit, so I'm taking the pencil two and just going over it with no additional shadow. For the upper lash line, I'm taking the Chanel Cielo Yeu eyeliner in 959 Psyche, and I'm just going to put this along the upper lash line. All right, so I am going to finish up my makeup and then I will be back to share my thoughts on all of these quads with you. Before we move on my thoughts, I just wanted to show you a couple of things. So this is the Opulus Lip Gloss in Lavendarine. I just wanted to compare this with the swatch. So here's the Lavendarine Eye Swatch. Just put that next to it. So you can see how similar those colors are. The lip gloss has a little bit more of a purple glint to it, which when you put the eyeshadow on the eye, I feel like it's pretty much the same. There you go. So those are really, really close. You can definitely see why they use the same name. I'm sure it's the exact same pigments in there. Just you've got the gloss formula versus the powder formula. And then I also wanted to compare the burgundy shade in the Dior Black Night palette. And this, shade doesn't swatch as well as it shows up on the eye but i think it is going to be most similar to blue blood just because they both have kind of that satin sheen you can see a little bit of that satin sheen here but the black knight palette does have a deeper base whereas the pat mcgrath stays more true to that burgundy shade but they both have a lovely satin finish I'm not really gonna do any other swatch comparisons for these. I don't really have any other shades that are really you know, similar enough to these, but let's go ahead and discuss my thoughts on these quads. First, I just wanna mention that I find it a little odd that one out of three quads is made in a different place and has slightly smaller pan sizes. That just seems a little odd to me. I would think they would be consistent. Again, I didn't notice any quality difference between those quads, but it was just like interesting that they weren't all made in the same place and they're not all the same size. Now, as for the quads, Pat McGrath currently has Fleur Fantasia as an exclusive on her website. So if you wanna purchase Fleur Fantasia, you have to purchase it directly from patmcgrath.com. And that's this one here. And the other two are available at Sephora, so you can purchase them elsewhere. Now, this one, Fleur Fantasia, I was so excited to see this one, this lavender blue shade 
I really, really wanted that. This whole quad just looks so pretty to me. I thought this was going to be my favorite just because of the lavender blue shade. But I have to say, I think this quad is nice, but it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. So all of the colors performed well. However, the lavender blue is a lot lighter than I expected. And to get the kind of pigment that you have in this swatch, you really have to apply a lot of product, either with a brush or with a finger. So even with a finger, you know, it's just a little bit harder to build it up to get the effect that you see in the pan or with the finger swatch. All of the shades performed very nicely. I have to say that this one here, the pink one, which is Iridescent Orchid, I thought it was gonna be a little bit cooler tone because in the pan, I mean, you can see that there's warmth to it, but it looks m m like a much cooler tone pink in general. And when I actually swatch it and put it on my eyes, it looks a little bit warmer toned. I still like the shade. I think it's very nice. It just wasn't what I expected. So these were my two shades I was really expecting to like kind of go gaga over, but um, you know, they ended up just being okay to me. Overall though, I really like the color story and I personally, you know, this one's a little bit warm for me, so I use this one more sparingly. Now, Interstellar Icon, this is my favorite quad. <laughs> so I knew I was gonna love this blue shade. I already had the Decadence palette, so I have Blue Blood. I knew I liked the shade. I had no issues with that being in there because I think it really makes a nice combination, this quad here. And I have to say Divine Dahlia, I couldn't really tell exactly what it was going to look like in person. And I, you know, cause like it kind of looks brown and then in some ways it kind of looks green and that's really kind of what it is. It's a green with a brown base and I love green shadows. I love these more olive tone shades. I have to say though, I did get um, quite a bit of fallout from that one. It's actually not that I could see a ton of fallout from that one but I could feel it. So whether I put it on with a finger or with a brush, I felt a little bit of fallout. And then if I then, for example, in the last look, when I went in with my finger with Blue Blood, just when I was tapping that on, even though uh, Divine Dahlia had been on for a bit, you know, that I still felt fallout of Divine Dahlia whenever I touched my eye. So it was like touch here in the center, but I could feel it falling from like the outer corner or like a different spot and so forth. And it's not like I ended up with tons of it, but the actual particles are large enough that I can feel it plonking on my cheeks, cheeks, which was just a little weird. It didn't bother me though, um, to the really because it did brush away cleanly. It didn't smear like some of the other ones do. Now, in general, I find with Pat McGrath shadows, there's pretty much always gonna be some fallout with the sparkly shades. So for me, it's not a deal breaker and I do try to remember to put on my eyeshadow before doing the rest of my makeup, particularly with her eyeshadows. Now, Risqué Rose, oh, just put my hand in the lip gloss, <laughs> but Risqué Rose, this was the one I really wasn't that excited about. And if they didn't have a deal where you could buy all three for a discounted price, I would have skipped this one because I just feel like I have enough pinks. But actually, I have to say that it ended up being a very nice quad. I really like having the Mink Noir in here. I think this is a great shade. And this shade here works very nicely as well. Let's see here, that one is, okay, Life on Mars. So Life on Mars, I think is a really nice peachy satin shade and it really can go on lightly. So I like this one a lot and that kind of surprised me a bit. Lavendaring, I expected it to be a bit more pigmented. I didn't think it was going to be a topper. And when I saw it here in the pan, you can see how chunky it looks. It doesn't really go on chunky on the eyes. It's just, it's just gonna be more of that topper effect instead. So it's really that you're just seeing all of those glittery particles kind of compact it, but when you apply them, they disperse a bit. So it's a very nice shade and it's gonna give you a little bit of an effect. This pink, I really like the formula of the pink, how creamy that texture is. And since this is the only one that's this creamy, I would say that's probably why this palette or this quad was made in Italy. Perhaps there's something that they could do with the formula that you know couldn't be done here in the States. 
I have no idea if that's accurate or not, but this is the only thing that I find different. And the other mats are her typical mats, whereas this one here is definitely a bit creamier to the touch. And again, as I mentioned before, when you first go in with a brush, you don't notice that. It's not until you kind of wear away that top layer that you find more of the creaminess in this pink. Now, shades that I really gravitate towards, as I said, I'd actually like this one to be a little bit lighter and I didn't expect it to be quite so warm. But that being said, it's still the one I go into quite a bit for my crease area because it is on the matte side. And if I go in lightly, it's not too heavy. So that's what I use for my crease today. And it definitely goes on lighter. You can see like buffing it out and it looks very nice with that. And I actually really like taking the Mink Noir on a smaller crease brush, brush for more definition as well. So I think those actually pair really well. Personally with these quads, you can get single looks using just the quads, but I think for me, I probably won't use them that way most of the time. I actually like combining the quads together or getting a like a single or something as well for more of a base or crease color because the matte shades that are included in these quads, most of them are just a little bit darker than what I would use for a typical crease color. And I do like to have something more matte or like a satin matte in my crease area compared to something super sparkly. Now, overall, these quads, I have to say, I think they are nice quads, but I don't think they are must have quads. So for the price point, I would have preferred them to be more like last year's with the special shades. I appreciate how all, these are pretty much all new shades and I like a lot of these new shades. However, I still don't think that a lot of the color stories are that different or unique. I still like them. <laughs> I mean, Interstellar Icon, I love that color story. It's something that, it actually reminds me of Midnight Sun with that whole color story because I feel like there are some similar shades in there. So I don't necessarily find the color story itself to be unique, but I love the shades in there. If I had to pick one quad to get out of these three, my recommendation's actually gonna be Interstellar Icon because this blue shade and then the Divine Dahlia shade, I think those two are gorgeous. Those are colors I gravitate towards though. Regardless, I still think that this blue shade, Hypnotique, is the most unique shade out of all of these 12 shadows. So I would, I would definitely recommend picking up Interstellar Icon if it's a color story that you're interested in. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's unique. You can create more, you know, everyday looks like what I have on now. You can use more of the blue and create more of a pop. So there are just so many different options that you can do with that quad. So I definitely recommend Interstellar Icon. I think this one's okay. I think this one's okay. I think if you already have like Divine Rose, Divine Rose 2, or any of those other pink tone palettes, it's kind of redundant. Um, I'd say the most special shade in there is actually the Lavendarine. I love the formula of this one, but the color itself isn't anything that really calls to me. Uh, I think the one in the Divine Rose 2 palette that's like, it kind of looks like this, but a shimmery version, it's actually that multi-chrome. That's a much more special shade personally. So I think this is a nice quad. I think this is a nice quad, but the only one that I actually truly love is Interstellar Icon. I hope this video ended up being helpful. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when my next video will pop up. And if you've picked up any of these, I'd love to know what your thoughts are or if you're planning on picking any of them up. Again, the only one that is exclusive to Pat McGrath's website, at least at this time, is Fleur Fantasia, this one here. But these other ones you can get at Sephora. And that's it. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon.